So you'll see the little red light up in the corner. That's all that means. <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Holly. Um, yeah. Thanks for having us tonight. And we want to thank the uh, New Glarus Public Library for hosting and also the uh, State Bank of Cross Plains for sponsoring tonight's class. Uh, we really appreciate the support and we're happy to come out and get a little information out to the community. Um, I am Adam Wisey. I'm the field supervisor at Project Home in Madison, Wisconsin. We run the weatherization program for Dane County and also all of Greene County uh, and also some other home repair uh, and home rehab type programs uh, throughout Dane and Greene County as well. Um, I've worked here for about 16 years. I started out as a carpenter and kind of worked my way up and now I'm the field supervisor here doing a lot of quality assurance uh, inspections, troubleshooting, a lot of uh, program uh, project management type duties here as well. And uh, in the 16 or 17 years I've worked here, we've seen a lot of different houses and a lot of different uh, situations, fielded a lot of questions. So uh, I do have a presentation I'll go through tonight, which is maybe a half hour, 40 minutes long, something like that on basic fall home maintenance, uh, which is kind of uh, just a good reminder this time of year as we go into the cold season and we start to shut our houses up a little bit um, on some things to keep your eye on, some things to check out prior to the winter. Um, We'll go through that and then I'm going to leave plenty of time for questions from the attendees. I really welcome the questions and it gives me a better idea of what you're actually interested in and what sorts of specific things you want me to, to address as well. So if anyone has a question throughout, um, I don't know if Holly, if you want to kind of prompt me if someone's asking a question uh, uh, virtually or if someone sure. wants to just unmute and fire away, that would be fine too. I think there's a way to raise your hand too, um, depending on what kind of device you're signed in on. Um, okay. Like mine is under reaction or no, I guess the reactions. Huh, maybe that's a setting. I'll look for it. And if I find it, otherwise, chat. Just, yeah. there is a chat. Yeah, if you want to just write into the chat feature, then I can give Adam a heads up and a good stopping point. Yeah, so I guess uh, I'll go ahead and get my uh, presentation fired up here and we can start going through going through things. Can everyone, did that show up? Okay, so again, just to kind of recap, this is a course on basic fall home maintenance. Um, and we'll just kind of go through uh, your house and the exterior of your home, some common things you should be checking out and keeping an eye on this time of year, and um, we'll go from there. So uh, we generally like to sort of break things down into the exterior and the interior maintenance. Um, it's a good idea to sort of break these out um, if you're starting this time of year to you know, bite things off in small chunks. So, you know, start with the outside, work your way inside, or if there's a bad weather day to start checking these out on the inside. And if we have a better weather day to start on the outside. So there's no right or wrong way to do this, but, and some of these situations and things that I'm going to mention don't necessarily apply to all homes or all homeowners um, or renters for that matter. But, um, you know, we'll just kind of go through the list and uh, hopefully it gets the wheels turning and if uh, these situations do apply to your to your uh, your residents then it's a it's a good thing to start taking a look at or keeping an eye on um, so the first thing as always we like to recommend people check out their roof um, yeah it's been you know nice out in the summertime uh, but it's a great time of year to get up there and if you're not comfortable on a ladder don't go up on a ladder try and try and check things out from uh, down low or if you have a pair of binoculars or something to check out the roof you're really looking for shingles that have uh, curled up or gotten blown off in windstorms, um, anything like that, uh, fascia or soffit panels that have fallen off, again, uh, in, in the spring and summer winds, uh, sometimes this happens. So just take a look at that, do a little survey around the entire perimeter of the roof and try and note any damage. If you do see some damage, you know, usually go inside and kind of identify the ceiling area underneath that damaged section of roof uh, and look for any stains or anything like that to see if things are actually leaking. Um, so definitely start outside, start with the roof. The number one cause of building failures and building problems is moisture, whether that's uh, water vapor, which causes mold 
or whether that's rain or uh, runoff, which can flood homes. Uh, it's moisture is the number one cause of building damage. So a lot of the things we're going to be talking about tonight relate to moisture getting in the home, rainwater getting in the home, how to manage moisture that's in the home, keeping that out of the home, keeping us at a nice, uh, nice level of humidity in the house. Um, again, just to prevent damage to the roof, trim those tree branches away. Things have been growing over the summer and spring. So, you know, if anything's uh, sagged or drooped or a branch cracked and is touching the roof, you definitely want to have that removed. Uh, you don't want that rubbing on the shingles, creating friction and causing a, a roof leak. So definitely get that stuff cleared away from the roof prior to uh, snow and ice season. Um, rake debris away from the foundation. So we don't want, um, you know, rodents or squirrels or chipmunks nesting right up next to the house. So definitely make sure all your uh, leaf litter and uh, plants are trimmed back for the year. Rake that stuff away from the foundation. Don't give them a nice uh, easy route uh, to get near the foundation because over the over the course of the winter they will likely find a way into your house. So get that cleaned up around the perimeter of your home. Um, any debris that's that's hanging out on the roof. So um, that stuff's obvious, but if you have any roof vents or if any of your exhaust fans vent through the roof, uh, definitely a good idea to make sure that all the vents are open. A lot of them have flaps on the vents to keep the wind from blowing in. Um, those, they're usually like little black or brown hoods that are on the roof. Uh, make sure that when you turn the fan on, the flap is opening. If it's not opening, then you may have a bird's nest or an insect nest in there that needs to get cleaned out. And again, those vent fans during the winter time are a really uh, easy way to help manage moisture and humidity in a home uh, to keep it at a nice uh, humidity level to keep uh, excess moisture from building up in the home. Um, the best way to know if you have excess moisture in your home in the winter is if you have uh, condensation forming on the windows. Um, that's generally a good indicator that there's a little excess humidity in your house and you can manage that by turning some vent fans on to help knock that moisture down. And that all starts with making sure they can actually vent to the outside. So check those vent hoods, make sure they're cleared out. Uh, gutters and downspouts, again, moisture management. So take a look at the gutters and downspouts, make sure that all the leaves are cleaned out. Uh, some people have gutter guards or screens on them. Um, some work better than others. Um, some of those don't work well at all and tend to trap debris underneath the, the uh, gutter guard. So even if you have gutter guards, definitely get up and at least inspect it to make sure that uh, there's no leaf litter or other debris collecting in your, uh, in your gutters and downspouts. And the downspouts, make sure that you, know, you haven't run them over with the lawnmower and crushed them or something like that. So uh, make sure that they're terminating well away from the foundation. Uh, again, get that moisture as far away from the foundation as possible so when the ground does freeze and we do have uh, you know, a snow melt situation in these shoulder seasons, um, you're not dumping a bunch of water next to your foundation and that's going to find its way into your basement. Um, again, a good, you know, we could wait for a rainy day, but a good way to just kind of check your gutters on any day is to spray the hose up there and see what the water is doing. Uh, wet the roof down, let the water flow, make sure that there's no uh, leaks in the gutters, make sure all the seams are tightly sealed, and then also make sure that the water is in fact draining away from the foundation where it comes out of the downspout. Uh, so double check that and then uh, let things dry out if you do find any leaks and then seal it with a good gutter sealant or caulk. Uh, definitely a good idea to take care of that stuff before the winter time. Uh, so exterior maintenance, again, staying on the outside of the house to start with. Um, chimneys, not everybody has a chimney anymore these days, but if you do, there are some specific things to take note of. Uh, definitely make sure that the uh, rain cap or the weather cover and the vermin screen are, are there, number one, that they haven't blown off and that they're properly secured to the chimney. Um, if they seem discolored or uh, leaves have clogged them up, definitely get up there, have a, a chimney service, uh, get up there and clean things out uh, to make sure that uh, if, you, if you do have a fire in the, in the appliance connected to your chimney, that you don't start a chimney fire. Um, and also if you are burning wood uh, for any reason, it's a great idea to have a service come out to inspect and clean that chimney assembly at least every other year, preferably every year. 
Uh, that way um, things can get uh, cleaned out properly and you don't have a buildup of creosote. Uh, inside, again, related to the chimney that you're looking at outside, but inside, check the fireplace and make sure that the fire brick is still intact and the mortar hasn't decayed inside the firebox. Um, that's a good place for, for fires to start as well in your home. If you're burning wood inside of a fireplace and the mortar uh, in an older fireplace and the mortar is de degraded and corroded, uh, that the heat and flames can get outside the firebox and cause a situation. So make sure everything is intact and in the right place. And then again, any flashing and sealant. Uh, so around the outside uh, where, where the chimney meets the actual roof to keep water out of that, that uh, intersection, there's usually metal flashing and sealants around that chimney to keep it weather tight. So check that out uh, over time. Some of those sealants crack and dry out. Again, the roof expands and contracts when it gets warm and cold at a different rate than your chimney. So uh, sometimes things loosen up around any of those penetrations through the roof and you just need to double check that everything is really well sealed up. Uh, roof sealant or flashing uh, can be taken care of and, and installed if there is any sort of deterioration noted. Overhead wires. So again, if you have any sort of telephone or cable wires, uh, the electrical service to your house, make sure they haven't sagged and are coming into contact with any branches. Uh, make sure no one is going to come into contact with them if they're pulling a truck or a car into your driveway. Uh, and just double check and make sure that they're all seem to be securely connected. A lot of them have large eye bolts holding them to the side of the house. Over time, some of those eye bolts can actually loosen up and, and uh, pull away from the structure. So if you see any of those lines that look like they're, they're sagging more than they used to, or if it looks like those eye bolts have loosened and are starting to come out of the home, definitely contact the appropriate utility, the cable company, telephone company, uh, New Glarus Electric Utility, um, or, or your whatever electric utility you happen to be using, and then uh, have them come out and service that because that's definitely could cause some headaches if they come off the wall. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to check out is really the grading around the home. And again, this is related right to that moisture situation. Uh, the way the ground slopes away from your foundation is really important. So make sure that you've got a good sloping away from your foundation. So when it does rain, you don't have water directed back towards the foundation, pooling up against the foundation because that can come and find its way into the house, cause flooded basements and other, other damage. Uh, so just double check that. If you need to uh, bring in some soil, um, it's, it's really cheap insurance to bring extra soil in tamp that down to get the grade of the found, grade of the land around your foundation sloped away from the house. That's really key. Um, check out the exterior walls, you know, uh, check out the walls for any damaged siding, uh, any cracked siding, caulk that has cracked or dried out over the years uh, that could let water in around doors or windows. Um, so again, we're just surveying everything, taking a look at everything at this point and noting any damage, anything that's dried out or cracked. And then uh, the, you can use the appropriate sealant to, to seal things up to make it weather tight again before the winter season hits. Foundation cracks. Um, some foundation cracks are just a result of the foundation drying and settling. So you're gonna get some cracking. That's kind of normal with the concrete foundation. Um, those small cracks, if they're not misaligned too badly, can be sealed up with a foundation sealant or uh, even a two-part epoxy that you can mix up and, and wipe in the crack to make it weather tight. Um, if it's anything uh, like bigger than say an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch wide, if the two sides of the crack are misaligned and it seems like one part of the foundation is leaning inward or outward, um, that's a much bigger situation that would indicate a structural defect in the house. So you're gonna to wanna to definitely contract, contact a contractor to come and look at that. Um, there are some foundation companies that deal specifically with these types of issues. So if you should note something like that, um, it would be best to check, check online for a foundation repair company um, and they can come and get that situation addressed because that situation will just continue to get worse and will cause some major structural problems with your home. So small cracks, it's okay to seal those up. Anything larger or misaligned, definitely you know, seek some further information from the professionals. Uh, if you happen to have wood siding or any wood trim on your house or porch, definitely check 
check out uh, you know any sort of damage that would have been caused by wood boring insects or woodpeckers. Um, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, they tend to create a lot of linear holes that go all the way through the siding or through the trim. And if left, you know, left with just the hole without getting made weather tight again, that surrounding wood can rot and let water into the you know, roof assemblies or right into the wall cavities. And that can cause some real problems. So um, catch those problems early. Um, you know, some people have had luck with uh, hanging mylar strips or, you know, the, the inflatable owls and snakes and things like that that you can hang off of your house to keep woodpeckers away. Uh, but generally speaking, once those woodpeckers uh, start their activity on your home, it's going to be a constant battle to keep them, keep them away. Um, so take a look for that, catch those problems early and address them right away. Uh, eliminate any soil or debris contact with wood siding around the perimeter of your home. So again, this goes back to that moisture thing. If, if dirt or any of your landscaping is actually in contact with the siding, um, as opposed to just the concrete foundation, that siding can wick moisture out of that soil and dirt and can actually lead to some deterioration of the siding. So make sure that you don't have any leaf litter, debris, soil packed up against the siding uh, just to keep things nice and clear and, and damage free. Same thing goes with stacking firewood. Um, it's not just a wood sided home. Again, I, I recommend any home. Don't stack your firewood right up against the house or set it on the porch right up against the, the outer wall. Um, these just invite rodents and things like that to nest in there. Um, it traps moisture between that pile of wood and your wall uh, and you really can't see what's going on on your wall uh, to see if things have deteriorated behind there. So definitely uh, if you are doing this, try and find an alternate location to stack your firewood. Uh, it's just going to keep things uh, better all around uh, for your home. Um, for those of us that don't have a chimney and have newer appliances like furnaces and water heaters that vent with PVC exhaust pipes, uh, you'll see those white pipes coming out either the, through the foundation wall or through the side of your house. Some of them still go up through the roof, uh, but just make sure that those pipes are unobstructed. If you haven't been running your furnace all summer, sometimes uh, we've had situations where spider nests, beehives, birds nests, I mean, kids stuff things down there, you know, there's a little hole, let's stick our golf ball in there or something like that. So definitely check out all those exhaust pipes, make sure they're free of obstructions because that can lead, if those are plugged, that can lead to a situation where your furnace may not run for a safety reason, or if they're plugged enough uh, to back up some of the exhaust in through the appliance, that can lead to a carbon monoxide situation in your home. So definitely make sure all your exhaust vent pipes are uh, free and clear of any kind of obstruction, whatever that may be. Uh, same thing goes with your exhaust fan grills and dryer vent hood. Um, we talked a little bit about some of the exhaust vent uh, fittings that go through the roof in that there may be, you know, a bird's nest or wasp's nest and things like that, preventing the damper from opening. Some of the ones that come through your sidewall can also accumulate either lint um, for the dryer vent or other types of debris, um, toilet tissue, lint, uh, hair, all kinds of stuff can get uh, packed up in, in your exhaust fan vents. So make sure those vent assemblies are nice and clear, working properly, because those are your best defense against uh, moisture problems during the winter time are your exhaust fans. Getting away from the house a little bit and looking more at the area around the home, you know, check out your driveways, walkways, uh, you can read the list, decks, porches, just double check and make sure that if there are any areas of deterioration, if you've had any sort of erosion in your driveway from, um, you know, large rain events or something like that, uh, if your sidewalk has settled unevenly, you know, double check all that stuff, look for any kind of tripping or, or safety hazards that would go along with misaligned drive, driveway or sidewalk slabs. Um, because when it gets icy and slippery out in the wintertime, um, again, one of the number one causes of emergency room visits are slipping and falling on the ice. So if, if we have misaligned sidewalks and stuff, that just leads to a potential safety hazard. So it's best to address those uh, this time of year before the ground freezes. Um, you know, just general housekeeping things, clean and store all your garden lawn equipment. Uh, the hose bibs, make sure you disconnect hoses from any of the exterior hose bibs on your home. 
Um, if you leave the hose hooked up, a lot of the newer ones are frost free or frost proof uh, uh, spigots, but um, they don't work 100% of the time. And if you leave your hose hooked up and there's water in that line, your hose can freeze and cause your pipes to freeze that are hooked up to it, which can lead to a really nasty situation uh, in the middle of winter if you have a burst pipe. So uh, disconnect those hoses, drain them out, and then uh, shut off the valves that, that serve those outdoor spigots uh, to prevent and make sure there's no water in, in those little, little stubs of pipe outside your uh, house wall. And then again, if you have a septic uh, system, just make sure you have that uh, system regularly serviced, uh, whether that's however frequently that is for your needs. Um, it's not necessarily every other year, but um, as needed is the best thing to say there. So we've kind of looked at most of the stuff outside, your roof, your foundation, the siding, windows, doors, porches, uh, the landscaping, driveway. Now we're kind of moving inside. And what I really like to have people start with are those areas where you don't spend a lot of time. Uh, so definitely start up in your attic and down in the basement or crawl space because you probably haven't been in there a whole bunch to see what's going on. So, um, you know, again, starting with the moisture because that's, that's that biggest problem that we see. Um, if you do happen to have a sump pump, make sure you check it for proper operation. So if you haven't heard it run in a long time, maybe you don't have a moisture problem. Maybe the water table's not that high this year. Um, the best thing to do is maybe uh, twice a year when we change the clocks in the fall and in the spring, you know, most people are good about changing the batteries and their smoke detectors, then check that sump pump too. you know, go ahead, dump a couple buckets of water in the sump, uh, sump pump pit and make sure the pump actually turns on and, and uh, discharges the water away from the house. So do that a couple times a year. Um, if you hear it running periodically, you're, you're good. You know that it's working. But, you know, if it's uh, pretty quiet down there and you haven't heard it run or you're not sure, just, uh, you know, if it's been a while, dump a couple buckets of water down there just to, just to clear that out and make sure it's working properly. Um, you're down in the basement, so start taking a look uh, underneath basement windows where the foundation uh, floor slab meets the basement foundation wall. Uh, look for any signs of uh, seepage, staining, water infiltration. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of sand or sediment that's worked its way uh, into the basement. That's an indicator that there's some water flowing through uh, into, into the basement. So double check that while you're down there. Um, check your window wells, you know, make sure that uh, you don't have a lot of leaf debris or animals nesting in the window well for your basement windows. And then make sure they've got good tight fitting covers so they're weather tight and that water doesn't uh, pool in there and run into the basement around the basement window openings. That's really important. We see a lot of that. Um, heating system uh, that are down in the basement or anywhere in your home, definitely get on a schedule of having that serviced regularly. Um, certainly if you note that it's been making strange noises, um, if you have strange odors coming off of it, uh, we talked about those PVC pipe exhausts. If you look at those and there's a lot of soot or other discoloration on the PVC pipe, definitely contact your, uh, your heating contractor, have them come out to inspect that unit. Uh, any kind of discoloration with those vent pipes is an indicator of a pretty serious problem. So um, if you do see that, that's certainly something to address right away. Uh, but annually, uh, or maybe every other year, if it's not in the budget to do it annually, have your heating system uh, serviced by a professional, whoever that may be. And then we already talked about turning off the valves for the hose bibs and, and disconnecting the hoses. Um, electrical components. We see an awful lot of um, DIY electrical connections that aren't necessarily properly put into junction boxes or things like that. Um, if you maybe don't know the whole history of your home and who worked on it when, um, it's a good idea to just kind of take a little inspection, walk around with a flashlight in the basement check out all the wiring connections, make sure there aren't anything, there isn't anything that's uh, outside of a box or that uh, appears to have overheated or sparked or that there's nothing, you know, melted wiring jacket or anything like that. Double check all that stuff. If there's missing junction box covers, put those on. Uh, you can get those now at the hardware store and they just screw on the box. Um, so double check that stuff uh, before, the, before the winter. And then 
if you have access to your attic, at least take a look in there. Um, even a lot of people think attics, so you know, a walk up attic, you can go up in it and, and there's maybe a room or some space up there for storage. Even those little panels in the bedroom closets, you know, if you have a ladder, put that up, put, you know, remove the panel, stick your head up in there with a flashlight and just take a look around. Take note to see if there's any evidence of roof leaks. You're going to see some discolored wood up there if there's any roof leaks or, or uh, discolored and uh, stained insulation would be an indicator of a roof leak potentially. Um, you'll, you'll see if there's any mold forming on the underside of the roof deck. You'll be able to see if there's any uh, bats living up there or anything like that. So it's a good idea uh, just once, once a year, you know, this time of year before the winter, take that cover off, shine a light in there. Even if you've done it last year, do it again this year. Take a look in there and see to make sure there's not anything that's taken up residence in there. Make sure that everything is intact that roof vents haven't blown open or blown off and that you don't have any, any moisture problems or roof leaks. Um, the ductwork for your home, I guess now would be a good time. You know, if, you, if you've been using your ductwork for both air conditioning and heating, that's the same system, uses the same circulator fan, the same ductwork and everything. Um, if you uh, only use it for heating, um, it might, might be a good idea this time of year to get your ducts cleaned if you uh, think that might be a good idea or you think that you might need it. Um, there's pros and cons to cleaning your ducts. Um, some people say don't clean them because there's if there's stuff adhered in there and they go in and knock it loose, there's a chance you could you know, introduce some sort of uh, indoor air pollutants into your breathing environment. Um, other people think get in there and clean it all out periodically and get it out of the house. So there's pros and cons to it. Um, that's, it's debatable whether or not you should do it. Um, if you feel like you need to do it, go ahead and do it. It's your home. Uh, go ahead and do it. Uh, now would be the time to do that. And also just from an energy efficiency and a comfort standpoint, and also that moisture, moisture management standpoint, now is a good time to do some kind of DIY uh, weatherization projects or, uh, you know, weather tightening projects. So make sure that all your doors and windows have intact weather stripping and that, the seal, that they seal properly. Um, take a look in the attic, that little panel that you were opening and closing, make sure there's a good weather stripping around the perimeter of that. So when it closes, you're not getting a draft or, or bugs migrating in and out of the attic into your house. Um, some people like to put the, you can go to the hardware store and get, you know, for 25, 30 cents a piece, these foam gaskets that you can uh, take the switch plate or the outlet cover off and install this, this foam gasket behind the cover um, and then put the plate back on. That kind of stops some, some little drafts. So if you're, you're sitting in a chair and you feel a draft, you know, kind of put your hand near the outlet or switch plate and you feel some airflow in there, it might be a good idea to get some of those foam gaskets to put behind the plates to just tighten things up a little bit. It'll help improve your comfort overall, especially if it's you know, in that chair you sit in every night and it's become an annoyance. Um, it's something really simple to do and, and that can actually make quite a difference. Um, plastic on the windows, I, I say in here, do plastic on the windows if it's a good fit for your home. Not all window designs allow plastic on them. Um, some of them have cranks and things like that that you just can't really, you can't operate them at all if, if you have plastic on them. And sometimes there's no way to get a good seal uh, around the perimeter of those windows. So uh, if you do choose to put plastic on your windows, the real key there is to make sure you have a 360 degree seal on that. So the entire perimeter has to be sealed tight to the window or to the woodwork around the window. Because uh, if you have any airflow between your house and that void that you made between the plastic and the window, that's gonna be a place where you're start, gonna start to see some condensation forming um, so the plastic, if it's got a real good seal around it, uh, no airflow, no moisture flow, you're doing good things. Uh, if there's a little bit, you know, if the cat scratches a hole in it or you have kids who poke their fingers through it or something, um, now you're going to have some problems with moisture getting in there. And because you don't have a lot of airflow uh, this time of year with plastic over most of it, but not all of it, you can actually lead to rotting of the window sills and some problems like that. And speaking of plastic, that goes on the inside of your house, not the outside of the windows. So if you put the plastic on the outside, what you've done is created a barrier and all that uh, warm air migrating from your house to the outside during the winter carries moisture with it. And if you put plastic on the outside of the window, that traps that moisture right up against your window 
and can lead to some very serious rot and deterioration problems with windows and doors um, if you put the plastic on the outside. So plastic is always going to go on the inside and basically prevent drafts coming from the outside in. So uh, keep that in mind if you're gonna put plastic on windows. Uh, interior maintenance, um, just again, make sure your air can, can move freely throughout your home. Uh, make sure all the vents, both the supply, which are the, uh, delivering heated air to the rooms and the returns, which bring the cooler air back to the furnace to get reheated. Make sure those are all unobstructed, that you don't have a dresser pushed in front of it or that a rug hasn't been thrown over the top of one of them. Uh, make sure everything is open and freely circulating. Uh, that's gonna give you the best amount of comfort in the home and um, the best amount of heat transfer throughout the house during the winter. So if you have any sort of uh, heat registers or radiators, uh, if you have a boiler system that has uh, the fin tubes on the, along the baseboard, make sure that you vacuum all those off. If, you, if they build up dust and pet hair and things like that, that can really, um, really slow, that can act as an insulator and slow the transfer of heat from that fin into your home. So your, your actual heating system can lose quite a bit of efficiency if you have dirty uh, baseboard heaters. So electric radiant heaters, uh, boilers that have baseboard heat emitters. Uh, make sure you're taking the covers off of those and cleaning them out uh, before the heating season because that'll make your entire system operate more efficiently. Um, generally, it's a good idea to open all of your curtains during the daytime. Uh, that's going to help get uh, nice, the warm sunlight's going to get in, help warm up your house during the winter. And then at night, when the It's going to trap that heat in your house, give you a little bit of an extra barrier between that cold window surface. Uh, so just get in the habit of managing uh, the, the window coverings in your house during the day and at night uh, to help kind of maintain some of that uh, exterior heat from the sun. Uh, that's also going to be a good thing to do because if you've got the blinds closed all night, again, that moist warm air in our house can get behind the blind, collect on that cold window surface and create condensation. And if you keep that closed for a long period of time, that can lead to window deterioration, that can lead to uh, mold formation on, on the windows. So definitely open those up during the day, let some room air get onto that, onto that glass surface and dry things out a little bit. Uh, but uh, it does take a little bit of an active homeowner participation um, to live in our climate. So definitely get in the habit of doing that uh, for more than just privacy reasons. Um, if you have GFCI outlets in your house, these are typically going to be found in uh, garages, basements, bathrooms, kitchens, anywhere where there, there's a potential for water infiltration um, or, or outlets getting wet. They're going to have the little buttons in the middle that say test and reset. Um, definitely a good idea to check those to make sure they're working properly. So again, since we're in, the, in this uh, checking out our whole home right now, Go ahead and test the outlets, press the test button, plug a radio in, make sure it's, or a light, make sure that it's uh, killed the power to the outlet, and then uh, press the reset button and make sure the power comes back to the outlet. Those are our, our safety items that are there to, to keep you guys safe in your homes. So definitely uh, check those out, make sure they're operating safely and properly. Um, again, we talked a little bit about uh, doing things periodically throughout the year. So when we change those clocks in the fall and in the spring, it's a great idea to check out your smoke detectors. And a lot of people now have carbon monoxide detectors or alarms in their house. Make sure that they're not accumulating a lot of dust. And definitely, if they have batteries that you can replace, replace the batteries in them. Um, when these are installed, the uh, installer usually writes the date of installation on them. Most of them aren't good for any longer than 10 years. A lot of the elements in them can deteriorate and you need to put new smoke detectors or new carbon monoxide detectors in your house after about 10 years. So if you have really old ones in your house, this might be the year to upgrade. Uh, go ahead and clean or replace your range hood filter. So if you have a fan over your stove that uh, has one of those little metal uh, grills or kind of a metal, metal mesh filter in there, uh, definitely take that out, soak it in some warm soapy water, clean it out, get the grease off, uh, and then to make sure that it's, it's allowing airflow through it. Um, and then I say here, consider reversing your ceiling fan direction. Again, um, some people do this religiously, other people never do it. Um, if you have ceiling fans that you intend to use throughout the year, 
Um, there's a little switch on the side of the motor which can make the fan blades turn in the opposite direction. So during the summertime, you're gonna be wanting to run those so it sucks air up from, the, from lower in the room and blows that cold air around the room. In the wintertime, you want them to be blowing air down towards you. So it's gonna pull that, that warm air at the top of our room and push it back down into the, into the living space of our room. So uh, if you do use ceiling fans throughout the year, definitely consider reversing the fan direction. That can uh, lead to a little bit of increased comfort in the home. Um, test your drains. We talked about the sump pump already, but test the drains in your home, not just the sinks in your kitchens and bathroom or your tubs, but think about that utility sink that's been sitting down in the basement or your floor drain in the basement. Again, fill up some buckets of water, pour it down the drain, look at the, look at the drain assembly if you can see it, make sure they're not leaking and make sure they're able to actually uh, get the water out of your house. Um, a drain cleaning service, if your floor drain's not draining or if you have a, a, a backup into the, uh, like a tree root issue, a drain cleaning, uh, most companies charge something like $125 or $150 for a drain cleaning visit. So it's usually not going to break the bank for most people. And again, that's really cheap insurance if you've got a slow moving drain. Uh, get that thing flowing freely. And then again, just that self-assessment of the heating system before you call a professional. Uh, you're really, you know, take the cover, the front cover off if you're comfortable doing that and take a look inside. Just, you know, visually look at a, with a, a flashlight. Check out all the electric wiring in there. Make sure nothing has melted or charred or looks, you know, otherwise discolored. Um, double check that there's no frayed wiring, uh, anything like uh, rust or uh, water stains that would indicate uh, condensate leaks inside the furnace. And then also change the air filter. This is like the biggest, the biggest uh, maintenance item that homeowners can do to extend the life of their furnace is to change your air filter in your furnace system regularly, whether that's once every six months or if you get a, a thinner, cheaper filter once every month. Um, get in the habit of on the first of the month or the 30th, put it on the calendar, check the furnace filter. And you know if it's not dirty, leave it until next month, check it again. If it's dirty, pull it out and put a new one in. Um, these little items like this, you know, some people leave them in for years and it just makes the heating system work that much harder. Air doesn't flow through the system that well. Motors overheat and burn out. So this is the one thing, the one thing homeowners can do to really extend the life of their heating system, change the air filter regularly. And then also moving out into garages, if you have an attached garage, you know, uh, or, or a detached one for that matter, just test the overhead garage door, make sure the, uh, make sure the opener operates properly, make sure the door is not binding. Um, you know, if you've got an electric eye, make sure that that works to, to stop the door. Um, put, a, put a cardboard box or a roll of paper towels under the door and close it. Uh, most of them have an auto reverse feature to make sure people won't get trapped under the door. So run that down once on it, it should automatically start to go back up when it hits that obstruction. Um, if not, contact your garage door company to, to take a look at that. And then again, moisture management, test all your snow removal equipment. Obviously shovels are a no brainer, but you know, make sure your snow blowers are working properly. Um, if you have heat tape or any sort of electric uh, wires that you run through your gutters to uh, defrost them, make sure those are, are operable for the year, uh, plug them in, or if you, if you have to plug them in seasonally. Um, and then your summer or warmer weather lawn equipment, drain the fuel or run the fuel out of them before you store them for the winter. Um, it's better for the engine and also, you know, that fuel evaporates over the winter. So you don't want to be introducing any sort of fuel vapors and things like that uh, into your garage. Uh, or if, especially if it's attached, because that'll migrate into your house. Um, you know, go through your vehicles, take uh, anything out of your garage or your vehicles that can freeze and burst or cause otherwise problems in there. So uh, double check that. And then uh, now's the time to start thinking about, you know, do we have shovels? Do you have salt or ice melts, uh, crystals? Um, go pick those up now, uh, because at the first sign of the snow, you can't find them anywhere. So uh, definitely go ahead and take care of that stuff now while it's on your mind. And then if you have issues with uh, ice damming, um, 
or a lot of icicle formation on your home, that's usually an indicator of either an insulation, lack of insulation or too much air leakage into your attic. Sometimes a ventilation issue with your attic, um, but it's usually kind of a, a systemic problem um, that has to be addressed through adding insulation, sealing up air leaks, improving the ventilation in your attic uh, to deal with it while you still have it before you take care of that issue. Um, consider getting a roof, roof rake, uh, rake excess snow off the roof, you know, keep those, keep the roof clear, uh, keep at least for the first few feet of the roof, uh, whatever you can reach safely. Um, you don't want that, that snow melting and refreezing, uh, clogging up your gutters. Um, I mean, that extra weight in the gutters can make them sag and tear away from the house. Um, they can, uh, the ice can get into your downspout and freeze and expand. And then that, you know, creates leaks in your gutters and downspouts. So definitely consider a roof rake if you do have issues with ice damming or any sort of icicle formation on your home. And again, most of this stuff is, is stuff that, like we said, it's basic home maintenance, basic fall home maintenance. You can take care of most of these projects yourself uh, with some tubes of caulk or sealant, uh, a little bit of weather stripping and a, and a hand stapler. Um, you know, that, that stuff goes a long way. There's a lot of good uh, resources at the library, uh, home improvement books, or how do I winterize my house, or how do I make my home more energy efficient. There's a lot of good information at the library. Um, there's really great resources in Wisconsin uh, through Focus on Energy. Um, New Glarus Utilities, I believe, is a participating utility down there. Um, so if you're dealing with high utility bills, comfort issues, indoor air quality problems, anything like that, you can get in touch with Focus on Energy. Uh, I've got the link here, uh, www.focusonenergy.com. Click on their residential tab, and then there's a, a, another tab for home performance. And you can have a, a home performance assessor come out to your home. They'll go through your house with you, um, identify you know, what might be causing your comfort issues, uh, what might be causing stains on your ceiling, what might be causing the ice dams, what might be causing comfort issues. And then uh, from that assessment, they can develop sort of a plan of action or a scope of work uh, to get you from point A to point B to address your issue. So uh, that's a great resource um, here in Wisconsin. A lot of times there are some uh, financial incentives to have that sort of insulation and air sealing work performed on your home. Um, there's uh, you know, money off the cost of the work. I believe Focus on Energy now has a, uh, a do-it-yourself incentive uh, where they didn't have that before, you had to hire a contractor. They now have a do-it-yourself incentive, and all those, in, all that information is found on their website on how to uh, do that work, document it, apply for that uh, monetary rebate, uh, all that sort of information. So that's really great resource we have here in Wisconsin that a lot of other states don't have. Again, I mentioned the Focus on Energy site. Here's our site at Project Home, www.projecthome wi.org. Um, we are available uh, to answer questions. Um, we're happy to have people call in or send us emails. Uh, outreach at projecthomewi.org is our email address for uh, public questions. And uh, we'd be happy to work through your housing problems with you. Uh, if you have specific home repair needs, there are a number of programs that we administer, again, in both Dane and Greene County. If you are in Greene County, um, so some programs are uh, require you to be financially eligible. So um, for low or moderate income households, uh, best thing to do would be to contact Greene County Human Services down in Monroe. Um, I'm sure your village hall down there can get you in touch with them. And uh, they can get you the help that you need to get qualified for and a your application submitted for any sort of um, assistance programs with home repairs and uh, weatherization or insulation needs. Um, if you're not low income uh, or moderate income, you know, Project Home also does um, just general contracting work. So, you know, if you wanted to contact us to uh, discuss any sort of home repair, home improvement project, we can certainly do that with you as well. Um, and we generally do that at no cost to the homeowner, uh, just as a cop. So, uh, I guess I will go ahead and open it up to questions. I don't think we have a lot of attendees here tonight, but again, they're uh, recording this, so that's good. Good deal. Um, I see we've still got Rob here. Um, 
did you have any specific questions you were uh, wondering about your home, anything I didn't cover or anything that I did cover that you'd like more information on? Uh, sure, I was just kind of curious. We tend to get a lot of moisture in one particular room of our house. And I didn't know if there was any kind of cause to that or any way to kind of uh, address that issue if, or if you had any uh, thoughts or ideas about that. It, it, what type of room is it? It's uh, sun. Did you say sunroom? The sunroom. Yeah, so sunrooms are generally additions uh, onto a pre-existing home. Oh, yep, sorry, sunroom. Yeah, you broke up a little bit, but I, uh, so those are generally additions to pre-existing homes and um, the, the way to deliver heat and cooled air to those spaces is sometimes an afterthought or it could be a porch that was converted to a sunroom. Um, so it's best to start with making sure that uh, the method of heat delivery uh, and return to get reheated or in the summertime, the met method of cooling that space um, is all connected properly to your, to your main system. Um, it's generally an airflow issue in those, in those side rooms. And it can also be related to um, a lack of insulation in those rooms. Um, again, if it is a converted space, like a, uh, an old three season porch that's been converted to a sunroom that's now used out of four seasons out of the year. Um, a lot of times some of the insulation details were not done properly and that might need a little further investigation into how that was all put together to really determine, okay, what sort of moisture problem is it? You know, are we, are we dealing with, you know, uh, in the wintertime, we've got warm, moist air in our house and that sunroom's a little bit cooler. So when that warm, moist air from our home migrates to that sunroom, you can get condensation on the walls or windows in that space um, where you don't have that in the rest of your house, but it is in that space because it's a little bit cooler in that room. So maybe finding some strategy to increase the temperature a little bit in that sunroom would help uh, decrease moisture if you're seeing that in the, uh, in the wintertime. Um, in the summer, uh, that can also be an airflow issue with not getting enough air conditioned air in there. Um, if you're not delivering enough air conditioned air and have enough return air out of that room, the humidity level can build up in that room and it doesn't allow your central air conditioning system to do its, its proper dehumidification job on the air from that room so it can stay a little, a little bit humid and damp feeling. Did that kind of address what you were looking at? Uh, that was perfect, yeah. It actually it hit on a couple of points that I was kind of concerned about, so thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything else uh, regarding your home that you're curious about? Uh, no, I think uh, good tips. I appreciate the, uh, the list of things to kind of check and uh, and the, yeah, the information has been great. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if we've got a representative from the library still here, um, <laughs> but uh, I really appreciate you attending tonight, Rob. And um, like I said, if you, uh, if you had further questions or if after you leave tonight and you had something that came up and you wanted to get in touch with me, um, my contact is Adam W at projecthomewi.org, uh, and I'd be happy to, uh, to follow up on any inquiries you had. I appreciate that. Thank you much. You're welcome. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Adam. Great information tonight. Lots of good tips. Yeah. It's, Lots to take home. This is a very different format for doing this. Usually I have, you know, some more visuals and we can do a little more hands-on stuff. So, um, I was afraid it's just a, a laundry list and hopefully it, it came across as something informative and people had some takeaways from it. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I thought it was great. It was good. A lot for me to take home as well. So yes, great. thank you. You're welcome. All right. I think we're good. Anything else? I think we're pretty well covered. Okay, I will go ahead and, and end the recording then. So thank you so much for taking the time to inform us tonight of all of the good information and tips. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having us. And we really appreciate your support. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you Thank so you. much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.